We all need to eat to stay healthy and active. Most of us get our food from the grocery store. But where does all that food come from? All the food we eat comes from farms all over the world, like this one. But did you know that one person needs one acre of farmland to grow all the food they need in a year? That's about half a soccer field per person. It might not seem like that much space, but how many people are in your family? What about in your school or city? All that land really starts to add up. By the time you grow up, experts predict that there'll be over 9 billion people in the world. There's no way that we'll be able to feed all the people in the world with the amount of available farmland we have now. Some engineers are getting creative with the way that they're using space for farming. Instead of spreading out, we can grow up. To learn more, I decided to speak to some engineers who are experts at designing technologies to help plants grow in new and exciting ways. Caleb Harper and Camille Richmond are part of the City Farm Research Group at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Their research is focused on engineering methods for growing food in areas like cities, where space on the ground is already limited. So what is City Farm and what are you doing here? A big problem, especially in cities, is that people don't have access to fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, so that's part of the problem that we've identified, growing in cities and also giving more people access to nutritious food. So what we're looking at is how can we put a lot of food inside of a city where a lot of people are eating food, obviously, and how can we use a very small footprint to do that? Hmm. So by very small footprint, you mean a lot less space is taken up? Exactly. So we're using a, a certain footprint and only staying within those lines by building only upwards and not outwards. I think you could think of it as there's two-dimensional farming, right? And that takes a lot of land. And we're, we're going to need all of that land that we have, and we're using a lot of it already. And then there's three-dimensional farming, which is what we're starting to explore now. Engineers like Caleb and Camille are just beginning to discover ways that three-dimensional farming might help solve our food problem. One idea is to stack many floors of crops into a tall building called a vertical farm. City Farm is a segment of what we think would be a vertical farm on the facade of a skyscraper in a city. We've been investigating how we can deliver fresh food and get this kind of technology closer into the heart of cities. So the goal is to get food to be grown in places where otherwise it wouldn't be possible because of lack of water, air, and light? Yeah, definitely. And then also where people live. So, you know, to avoid growing it 3,000 miles away and sending it to where people live. Why can't we just grow and eat in the same place? I think it's interesting for us, you know, this could be a community garden, so we've been investigating that at the scale of like a shipping container. You know, could you bring these things in and have a few people operate them for the benefit of the community? In vertical farms, plants are grown indoors, so they can't get the water, air, and light they need as they naturally would outdoors in a traditional farm. To solve this problem, agricultural engineers like Caleb and Camille use a tool called the engineering design process. First, they identify the problem that needs to be solved. People need a way to grow more food in less space. Next, they investigated what plants need to grow and imagined and planned different technologies they could use to keep plants growing indoors. Caleb took me into the city farm to show me the foods they were growing and the technologies they had engineered. I was amazed by the sights and smells of all the fresh vegetables. It was almost like I was standing outside in a field. So this is what you need to think about when you're about vertical farming. You have a plant and it has a certain size above ground and it has a certain size below ground. So when you're stacking them up, you need to give a little distance so that there's some light in there that you can supply, right? If you think about this plant, if it was planted in the ground, that's about how much space it would take. And that's never going to change, really. But now you look at our system, and for one square foot, to two square feet, to three square feet, to four. Now we get to four plants in the exact same place we used to be able to do one. So that's the real biggest benefit of vertical farming. Inside of here, we create a whole climate, and it's that climate that helps plants grow. So that's things like light, air, and water. Plants absorb the light, air, and water from their environment and use a process called photosynthesis to make their own food. Since the plants in City Farm are grown indoors, it's up to the engineers to provide the right amounts of these ingredients for the plants to be healthy. Here, this is a pump. 
So that pump is taking the water from here that already has all the minerals and is already uh, oxygenated and ready for the plants. And these black tubes transport it into here. So if I lift one of these up, do you see how there's a little ripple yeah. coming right there? Do you right feel here? the water coming oh, out? Uh huh. I do. So that side is the water input, right? And this side, you see that black standpipe? Yeah. That's keeping the water at a constant level. So it's always filling, it's always moving, and it's always draining. So that water also goes up these black tubes all the way to each different layer. So on every side you'll have an input, and on every side you'll have an output. All this mo motion in the water keeps the plants really active and healthy. And so inside of this air, we're controlling the humidity. So how much water is in the air? That's really important for the plants to be able to, to transpire and to be able to grow. One of the main ingredients for growing plants is light. Caleb and his team are constantly testing different types of light to see what the plants react to best. So if you look in these six different bays here, you know, if you look at kind of the light color that's coming off of this one, it's a little bit more of a white light. The plants look a little bit greener. If you look into this one, it's a little bit of a more pure, just uh, red and blue. And then up here, we're doing a study that has natural light and LED light, more of it. So everything here is an experiment. Everything in here is an experiment at all times. In here, you know, I described we have the climate that we're creating. We have a lot of sensors in here. So this is like a little computer. So it's taking measurements. Wow. So every eight seconds on the water, and then that one over there is collecting every eight seconds on things like CO2, temperature, humidity, all of the air qualities that we're looking for. Hmm. So what we're doing is we're studying that data. So what we're creating is called a plant recipe. Right? And that recipe is all of those variables together. And that's what's produced this healthy plant that's sitting in front of us. So at the end of this grow, we'll harvest the plant, we'll see how good it was, and we'll have a recipe of data that backed it up. And next time, maybe we change it and we make it a little bit better. These recipes aren't known uh, right now in science, so we're exploring. We're just having conversation with the plant through sensors and trying to find out what exactly is perfect. Every time Caleb and Camille use a new recipe to grow a batch of crops, they're using the test step of the engineering design process. They use the knowledge they gain from the results of that test to improve their recipes and grow even healthier plants in the next round. So what inspired you to start doing this research in the first place? I really liked being around the food that I was going to eat and I thought it was so cool to see um, plants grow until I could feed people with them. And as an engineering major, I was really excited about building systems around living things. So what's your ultimate goal for City Farm? Well, I think right now we're just at the beginning. So we're just building tools that people can use later to solve the big problems. One of our goals with this work is to create a lot more farmers. And I think that you know, this new kind of digital farming or this, you know, urban farming can create a different kind of agricultural engineer, a new one that the world doesn't know yet that's a combination of, of things like a computer scientist and an electrical engineer and a mechanical engineer. In order to meet their goal, it is important for Caleb and Camille to continue to communicate with other engineers. As they learn more, they hope to create a future where vertical farms become a common sight in cities and freshly grown fruits and vegetables are always only a few blocks away. Caleb and Camille are working hard to figure out how to get plants the light, air, and water they need to survive in places like vertical farms. But their work is just getting started. Today, vertical farms exist mainly as ideas or concepts in the minds of engineers, but prototypes are starting to spread up in places like Chicago and Singapore. As the world's population continues to grow, it's going to be up to a new generation of agricultural engineers like you to develop new vertical farms and other technologies to make sure that we all have the ability to grow and eat fresh, delicious food.